Okay, thank you for giving us the second chance. So, uh, uh, let's consider two genes. Uh, for example, in this uh, slide you can see two genes and they can be uh, not correlated or co correlated, which can be expressed as connection uh, with, uh, between these two gene genes. And w it can be expressed as a graphical model. Uh, and actually, this second one can be connected to the third one and so forth. And all these genes can form uh, some kind of biological network. And in this biological network, they can be network motifs that, which are repeated parts of uh, network. So the goal of our project was, uh, well, the, our hypothesis was that uh, cancer caused some changes in these motifs, so uh, they uh, has uh, Tumor, uh, tumor uh, tissues has uh, changes so that motifs are different. So our, the goal of our project was to compare these two networks uh, in terms of uh, changes in network motifs. So the data are given as DNA microarray expressions, and for each patient we have a number of um, a set of numbers, which means that if the number is high, then presence of this gene is high. So, but for only one patient, we cannot uh, s uh, build this network, so we need a set of uh, patients. And for example, here you can see that gene 1 and g 2 are correlated, and gene 1 and gene 3 are not cor correlated. So, and also there can be situations that gene 1 and g 2 correlate, gene 2 and g 3 correlated, and so therefore gene 1 and g 3 also correlated. And we need to avoid this situation. So we need to calculate partial correlations and not the correlations only. So. The data that we have is 45 patients, and for each patient we have uh, 30,000, it's not correct number, 30,000 DNA expressions, and number of features much larger than number of samples. And what we initially did, we reduced uh, these expressions to about 600 by removing uh, d expressions with uh, low standard deviation. Uh, so there is a bunch of techniques to calculate partial correlation, for example, by inverting covariance matrix or by regression, but they all have uh, drawbacks, like in our situation, covariance matrix is singular, so because the number of features is much larger than the number of samples, estimates suffer from higher variance, and inverting covariance matrix doesn't take into account similarities between two sets. So we have two sets, and from the same patient, from tumor and non-tumor tissue, so they are they should be pretty much the same. And we use joint graphical lasso to build these networks, uh, which takes into account the similarities and avoids uh, sing, uh, problems with singular uh, covariance matrix. So uh, we used joint graphical lasso with fused loss function, with, which has two parameters, lambda 1 and lambda 2. Lambda 1 is uh, higher is lambda 1, the more sparse will be the matrices, and higher is lambda 2, more similar will be these uh, estimations. So we run this algorithm for non-tumor and tumor and got these two uh, networks. And uh, so there you can see a network. Uh, black edges are similar for both tumor and non-tumor. Green edges are edges for non-tumor data and red ones are for tumor data. Uh, then we run uh, network motifs algorithms, and unfortunately, we didn't find any differences between these two data, and so it's, which means that our initial hypothesis was wrong. Uh, okay, and what we now want to do is we want to use these networks to identify a set of genes that uh, cause cancer, and uh, uh, then we want to take them apart and then we will try to train SVM for set of all genes and identified by us genes and um, uh, conduct uh, cross-validation for these two dot sets. And if uh, accuracy will be the same, we can conclude that uh, this uh, genes was identified correctly. So that's all. Thank you.